Well, hello and welcome to Skybound on the Ground with Michael Lombard. My name is Michael Lombard. If you're interested in learning about flying, aerodynamics, how airplanes work, how airplanes fly, how you can become a pilot, well, you've come to the perfect place because this is the first installment in a series that's going to be talking about all the different subjects of aeronautical knowledge that you need to know to become a private pilot. Uh, the textbook that we're going to be using is actually the FAA's publication. It's called the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. And the cool thing is that you can download the book in its entirety for free off the FAA's website at faa.gov. And just search for Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge when you get there. And so uh, we're going to be going through that chapter by chapter, talking about the different topics that are um, of interest to pilots and uh, how that relates to flying and all the different interesting things uh, about how yeah how to become a pilot so why don't we get going then um, chapter one uh, is actually basically mostly a history about the FAA which is the Federal Aviation Administration now uh, these are the guys who oversee flying in the United States uh, they're the ones who say who can fly who can't fly when you fly what you can do what you can't do and so chapter one is really all about them um, how they got going how they made the rules um, there's actually, uh, if I can find my book here, there's actually a big fat book that they uh, produce. It's, uh, they made these regulations it's called the Federal Aviation Regulations, and that's the FAR, uh, we call it, and uh, or the FARs. Uh, and then they also have other publications. The second part of this is the Aeronautical Information Manual, which uh, has all sorts of more practical stuff. So um, those are the rule books. Uh, so chapter one talks about all that different stuff. Uh, the, um, where you can find the regulations, where you can find uh, handbooks, uh, just like the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge is for, available for free on the FAA's website. They've got tons of other uh, manuals and handbooks that you can download off their website. They also have these things called advisory circulars, uh, which are uh, basically publications that they circulate to pilots uh, on advice that they want to give them, uh, single subject topics. Uh, and uh, we'll We'll discuss more of that later on. Uh, they also mention all the different other aspects of the FAA, their safety inspectors, their uh, FAA safety team, um, uh, as well as um, their flight standard district offices uh, where you can go and uh, get various services uh, taken care of at the FAA. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much everything about the FAA that you ever wanted to know and didn't ever want to know. Uh, I think the only thing that didn't put in there was uh, where their favorite burger joints are. Uh, but uh, FAA aside, um, the chapter one also talks about uh, how you can become a pilot in different categories. Uh, pilot certification covers different categories that you can become a pilot as a, for airplanes, rotorcraft, gliders, lighter than air, powered lift, powered parachute, uh, as well as weight shift uh, control air, um, uh, aircraft. Uh, the thing we're concerned with is uh, becoming certified as a pilot for an airplane. At least that's what I'm concerned with. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to be talking about. So why don't we do that? Let's learn about airplanes and go into chapter two. Uh, this gives us the introduction to uh, the parts of an airplane, what an airplane looks like. I think most of us knows what, know what an airplane looks like. But uh, do we know what the different parts are? Well, let's take a look here. So as I get this uh, thing... Uh, erased right here. I think probably most of us know uh, that airplanes have wings. Well, they also have a body, they have a tail, uh, they have some sort of a way of getting them through the air. And so we're going to give names to these uh, <clears throat> these parts of the airplane. And so first of all, what's the body of the airplane? We got this thing right here. This is the body of the airplane. We call that the fuselage. And the fuselage is where you, the passenger, or now you, the pilot, get to ride. It's also where you put all the uh, bags uh, and uh, the dogs and the cats and whatever else you might be flying along. So you got the fuselage, then you've also got wings. We talked about that. Wings are those amazing things that cause us or allow us to fly. And without wings, we wouldn't go terribly far. Unless we had some sort of a rocket engine so that we could go up into space, uh, then we might have another trouble, be another, another problem, because we're in space now. Anyway, so we got wings, um, and then there's a back part here, so that's the fuselage. Uh, what's behind the fuselage? The empennage. Okay, the empennage. Um, 
also known as the tail of the airplane. And then you got some sort of means of propulsion. Um, and in this case, we have a propeller. Um, the propulsion source is called the power plant because it's the power plant of the airplane. It's where your power is produced. And uh, in this case, it's a piston powered propeller. And then finally, the last component is these little rolly things called wheels. Um, and the aviation term for that is landing gear. Okay, so let's go through this uh, a little bit more in detail. Like I said, the fuselage, that's the body of the airplane, that's where you sit, uh, your passengers, everything else you want to carry. Then you got the wings here. And uh, let me make this wing a little bit bigger so I can show you something in there. Um, wings have an internal skeleton. Just like you have a rib cage, wings also have ribs inside them. And this is what gives support to the wings. And uh, and you've also got another part to the wing. And you have these hinged movable surfaces. On the outboard part of the wing, there's this hinged surface that can hinge. <coughs> okay, so you got this outer part, this hinged surface. It can actually be moved upwards and downwards. And there's a name for this. It starts with an A. It's kind of an interesting name. It sounds kind of French. I wonder if it is. It's called aileron. It probably came from the French. <clears throat> and then uh, the aileron is actually used. To, it's deflected against the airstream. And that's how you can actually roll the airplane and bank the airplane. And that's one of the main controls. Then over here inboard, you have another hinged surface. And that is called the flap of the airplane. And this is only hinged in one direction. It can be actually, it can either be up or it can be pointed. Sorry, it can only be flush with the wing as it is right now, or it can be deflected downwards. And the flap is used to increase lift on the wing, and that's used during takeoffs and landings. So you've got that on both sides of the uh, of the airplane. You got one on the on each wing, and so that's how you're able to control it. So that's the uh, that's the wing. <clears throat> so you got. Oh yeah, there's one other thing. Um, have you ever wondered where they put the gas in the airplane? Well, there's all this lovely space inside the wings, and that's actually where they put the fuel tanks in most airplanes. And so they put fuel in there. Okay, so that's the wing there. Uh, and then let's talk a little bit about the power plant. Um, you got, you know, you have uh, jet airplanes, of course. Jet airplanes have um, turbine. Um, uh, turbine jets on them, turbofans, and that's how they move forward. It provides a means of uh, thrust because you all got all this hot gas coming out. Well, in our case, we're not going to be flying those just yet. We have to fly um, piston-powered propeller airplanes. <clears throat> and so you got a propeller that spins and that produces thrust, and that's how the airplane is able to move forward through the air. Uh, the power plant also does other things. Uh, it can provide power for the um, electrical system in the airplane so that you can run the instruments um, and the radios and uh, you know if they if the passengers are plugging in their devices or whatever and you have some sort of means of powering that up. So the air, the uh, power plant does that. It also powers uh, other types of instruments that aren't running on electricity but instead run on um, vacuum air, uh, kind of like a vacuum cleaner type deal. Um, and so the power plant does that. It also provides heat to the cabin um, as well as uh, the other things. <clears throat> so that's the power plant. Uh, and then you got the landing gear. Um, now there's two types of landing gear uh, in terms of configuration. It used to be there was the old school way. The way that they used to build airplanes was that they had... So here's the airplane. They used to put the... Uh, that's the wing, by the way. They used to put the main wheels up front at the front of the airplane and then they had this little tiny wheel at the very back it's a tail wheel and this is conventional style landing gear they actually stopped doing that mostly in airplanes because they found that the airplane is kind of a little bit unstable on the ground it gets squirrely and so <clears throat> if you're going along here's the back of the airplane um, it tends to want to swap ends if you start going a little bit too much sideways. Uh, so, challenging to say the least. Um, it makes better pilots though, but they, were, uh, they wanted to make something a little bit easier. So, uh, instead of the tricycle gear, uh, sorry, instead of the conventional gear, I just gave away the answer. They made 
um, airplanes with a tricycle gear configuration. That's the wing again. And where you put the main gear in the back and a little nose wheel in the front and it's a lot easier to steer and it doesn't have as much of a tendency to swap ends. <clears throat> That's the landing gear. So we've gone over the power plant, the fuselage. Uh, okay, let's look at the empennage here. Empennage is important because you got these stabilizers. Uh, you, you can call that the tail fin. It's actually called the vertical stabilizer. And that's just what it does. It stabilizes the airplane by having that fin there. Then you've got the tail plane right here, which is the horizontal stabilizer. And you notice we have more hinged surfaces here. This is called the elevator back here. And uh, that is how you can actually pitch the plane up and down from the cockpit, one of the main controls of the airplane. And then back here is the rudder. And that's how you can yaw the airplane uh, side to side. And so those are part of the main flight controls. You've got the ailerons, the elevators, the rudders. Um, and that's these elevator and rudder is all part of the empennage. There's also trim tabs back here, and we're uh, it's another hinged surface that's on the very tip of the elevator, and that is actually adjusted uh, so that you can um, control how how the air flowing over the elevator is going to hold that in the airstream, and we're going to talk that, about that more later on. <clears throat> so okay, we've gone over. Fuselage, empennage, power plant, landing gear, wings. Uh, those are the main components. Uh, there's also subcomponents. Um, we kind of talked about that when we looked at the ribs of the airplane. So you've got these ribs that that's part of the airplane's airframe. So beneath everything, there is a frame that holds the whole thing together. And uh, <clears throat> there's actually two two main ways that they um, Put the uh, that that they configure the airframe, and so let's look at it here. Let's, let's say here's the fuselage. Um, looking at it, uh, kind of like a uh, see-through cutaway. Um, and here is so these things are called uh, what are they called formers? Um, they discovered a aircraft manufacturers figured out a way early on how to make airplanes super lightweight. Instead of making these um, really heavy um, truss sections and stuff like that, they just decided to make these circular things and uh, stretch fabric, and nowadays you use metal, super tightly over that. And what it, what it becomes, it becomes like a kind of like a soda can, you know? You have the soda can, and you have the aluminum and it's super strong, you can actually basically step on it uh, and it will almost hold your weight, it'll hold a lot of weight until you poke it in the side and then you get soda can pancake, hopefully there wasn't any soda left in there. So that's the basis of this design right here, you stretch the aluminum uh, skin super tightly over these formers and then you got all this empty space in there you can put stuff in there and it makes the airframe itself super light so that's called um, monocoque design and uh, that's how some airplanes are uh, made monocoque design uh, but like I said the structural integrity of it is compromised if you get some sort of a dent in there so they decided uh, there's another way that they can do it. You still have these formers, and uh, my drawings are getting progressively worse. And to make things stronger, to help support the uh, the load, you're going to put these um, stringers along there, and uh, basically rods uh, that help take some of the load. And so uh, this is called semi monocoque. So that's just a little bit on aircraft uh, um, airframe structure. Uh, the other parts of the other subcomponents of the airplane, like I mentioned, there's electrical systems that you might have um, that powers your instruments, your radios, um, any kind of passenger entertainment systems, or or whatever you got for the passengers. Um, lights in the airplane. Uh, and then you got the flight controls. We talked about those. Um, and that's how you control the airplane. So that's a subcomponent. Then you've got the uh, the brakes, um, the wheels. 
um, it would be a good thing to be able to stop an airplane once you get on the ground. So they put brakes on wheels, which um, they actually look pretty much like car brakes. They're just smaller versions. Disc brakes, so you know, you've got the disc and you've got the pad on there, and uh, it presses against the disc and slows the airplane down. So, okay, that is uh, pretty much uh, the basics of our airplane. And so we know what an airplane looks like, we know um, what the different parts are, uh, but wouldn't you like to know how an airplane flies? Well, I would too, and so that means you have some homework to do, and uh, go ahead and download uh, the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, uh, Chapter 3, and read through that, and uh, then we will go ahead and start talking about the principles of flight in our next edition of Skybound on the ground.